Hey everyone, welcome back to Melissa's Kitchen Table. Tonight we're going to go ahead and make a birthday cake for a friend of mine, Ashley Ray. We work together. Um, we talk a lot about um, Jello and things like that. We love Jello. So I figured in honor of her birthday tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and make a pistachio flavored cake. And then we're going to poke holes in it. And then we'll pour some strawberry jello over that and we'll top it all off with some homemade whipped cream. It's gonna come out delicious, so let's get started. guys so we're gonna go ahead and get started by making the cake now you can make a homemade cake or you can use a cake mix whichever you prefer uh, tonight I need to do this pretty quick so I'm gonna use a box mix but adding one of those other flavors to it is really gonna make it uh, enhance the flavor and to be honest if you get a decent one it's really just flour sugar I mean, this one, you know, doesn't have the best of ingredients, but people like it. So I have one package, I'm going to dump in my bowl here, and then you just need to follow the directions on the back. It calls for three eggs, so I'm going to go ahead and put three eggs in here. And for mine, it's calling for one cup of water and a half cup vegetable oil. So let me grab that. All right, I put in the one cup of water. And I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of oil. Now, we just don't buy vegetable oil, but I have um, canola oil. And that's fine to use. You just want a flavorless oil. So olive oil probably wouldn't be the best choice, but I'll be honest, I've used olive oil in cakes before and no one's ever noticed. If that's all you have, that's all you have. All right, so to that, I'm gonna add one and a half packages of instant pudding. I'm using the pistachio flavor. And you could use chocolate, vanilla, butterscotch, whatever flavor you want, any kind of combination that you like. Now, I'm using one and a half, and that's basically because I'm going to be using half of the other package in the um, frosting. So I don't want to waste half a package. And I'm not going to measure it out to make regular pudding with it, so... Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put just about half of this in here. Okay, perfect. Alright, so what we're going to do is go ahead, I'm going to put this on the mixer, get this all incorporated, and it could be pretty loud, so we'll be right back. Okay, once it's done mixing, I'm going to go ahead and just scrape the bottom, make sure everything's incorporated. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and I'm using a, let's see, 9 by 13, I think. And what you want to do is just spray this, just using regular cooking spray. You could um, use parchment paper if you'd like, but it should be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dump this cake mix into this uh, pan. Now, I have my oven preheating at 350. You're just going to go ahead and follow the directions of your recipe 
or mix. And then uh, you're just going to bake it um, according to the directions. You can also make cupcakes with these. Everything we do here, you could do with cupcakes. They'll come out really good too. Now, if you don't like the color, like it, it's a light green, which is fine. I don't really have a preference. Uh, but if you want it a little darker, you can go ahead and add some green food coloring to it. It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the oven. Um, I think it's going to take probably 20 minutes or so. Um, again, just follow your recipe or your box mix. So once that's done, we'll be back. Okay, guys. So I took the cake out. As you can see, it's right over here. I literally just took it out now. I have a small bag of strawberries. These were frozen. I let them defrost, and I just put my hand in there and scrunched them up a little bit. Now, if you want, you could add sugar to this, um, but I'm going to be adding the Jello to it. And I know, um, I know Ashley, so she doesn't like things super sweet. Um, but if you think it's going to not be sweet enough, you could always go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of sugar to that if you'd like. I think we'll be just fine because these are not in syrup. They're just plain strawberries. I guess you could use the one in syrup too and then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mix one container of gelatin um, with one cup of hot water and I'm going to mix that together. So let me go grab that. All right, so I have one cup of super hot water, you can use boiling, and I'm gonna mix this one package of Jello in here. And this is the regular Jello, we don't use sugar free. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shake this up like so. And you really want the Jello to dissolve in there. So this is gonna take a couple, you know, like a minute or two to um, go ahead and mix that up. So we'll be back. All right, so I'm done mixing that up. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right into here. And we'll mix that together. Now I did use um, cherry jello, but uh, I just wanted to try a different flavor with it. I use strawberry all the time. So I just wanted to try something different. Um, but of course you could use strawberry, you can use raspberry, you can use any flavor you want. So I'm just going to let this sit here a little bit. We want that to mix up. And I'm going to go ahead and get another cup of boiling hot water for the other package of Jello. Okay, for this one I actually got a cup and a half, not just a cup. And that's because those strawberries have a lot of juice in them, so it'll make up the rest. And I'm not doing um, the directions on the box. I believe it calls for two cups of water total. I don't want that much water. I want it to be uh, really thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another package of Jell-O. And put that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and shake this up for a couple minutes. We'll be back. All right, so here's our cake, and it's still hot. It just came out of the oven right before I mixed those Jello packages. So it hasn't been out of the oven that long at all. It's still very hot. Now, I'm gonna use do this like a poke cake. So I'm just taking a long wooden skewer, and I'm using the flat end of it, and I'm just poking all over the cake. You could use the back of a wooden spoon. Just don't want it to be too, too thick. Like the silicone spoons that I used, they would be too big. It would just ruin, it would just mash the cake. If you don't have any of that, just use a fork and you could do the same exact thing with that. Now what these holes are gonna do is let all that jello go inside of the cake. So you're gonna have that flavor throughout the cake. And then when you cut into it, it's gonna be really pretty looking because you're gonna have little like waterfalls of red jello inside the cake. 
which I guess this would actually be a really good uh, color combination for Christmas. Very pretty. All right. So I just want to make sure enough filling goes in there. Now I'm letting the jello with the strawberries sit for a little bit. I want it to um, firm up a little bit because I want more of that to sit on the top of the cake. Whereas the box of jello that I just did with a cup and a half of hot water, that's going to soak into the cake. And that's what I want to do. So I'll give it one last shake so none of the jello sits on the bottom. Go ahead, open that up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pour it right over. And it's going to be messy looking, but the cake soaks it right up. So a lot of it's going to fall, you know, to the sides. It's liquid you're putting on here. But a lot of it will soak into the cake from the top and whatever is on the bottom will soak into the bottom of the cake. So you don't have to worry. All right, so that foam will settle down as well. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit. This, you, the cake you could go ahead and throw in the fridge. I'm gonna let it sit probably five, maybe 10 minutes as soon as those strawberries start to look like they're thickening up a little, I'll go ahead and pull it out and we'll put that part together. Okay, so uh, I let this sit for a couple minutes. These strawberries aren't um, all that gelled. They have a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and just dump this on here. It'll all eventually work. It's just going to go into the refrigerator, and this is going to create a nice topping on it. So I'm just going to pour this over, and then I'll spread it out with a spoon. All right, so this is going to create a nice topping on this cake, kind of like a strawberry shortcake. All right. So now this is going to have to sit for a bit. Um, you're going to go ahead and put this into the fridge. And I would wait. Yeah, It'll probably set in maybe an hour or so. But really once it's cool, you could go ahead and put the topping on it. It's still a little hot right now. So I'm going to go ahead and set this in the fridge. And as soon as it's nice and cool where the whipped cream won't melt, I'll go ahead and put that on. We'll be back. Alright guys, so it's actually getting kind of late, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the frosting, um, and the cake still isn't completely cooled down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it cool overnight, because it's late now, so I don't want to rush it and put it on and have it ruined. So I have a container of whipping cream here. I'm going to go ahead and use three-fourths of this. I'm going to leave about a quarter left. You don't need too much. And instead of adding sugar, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of that jello pudding. Now, if you like it really sweet, by all means, go ahead and add um, some sugar in there. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this with the whisk attachment and beat that up to stiff peaks. So I just wanted to tell you really quick that um, I went ahead and added the last quarter cup in there. I figured there's no reason to keep a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm not going to need it. Uh, and I'll just throw it on the cake. But I just wanted to let you know I ended up adding the entire container. Alright, so that only took a couple minutes. Not long at all. And you don't want to overbeat it. You just want stiff peaks just like that. It doesn't fall off easily. If you overbeat it, it'll turn into butter. Now, like I said, I did try this. It's not very sweet. The pudding doesn't make it extremely sweet, but that's what I'm going for. If you want it to be a little bit sweeter, I would add a couple tablespoons of sugar to it um, when you first start whipping it. 
So now I'm just going to keep this in the refrigerator overnight. And then in the morning before work, I'm just going to go ahead and spread it over the entire cake. And I'll go ahead and insert a picture of that at the end of the video so you can see what it actually looks like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you try this recipe. If you do, leave me a comment down below if you like it or if you tried a different version. And please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.